We have seen a huge movement coming in in case of the commodity prices there. If you look at the gold prices, Jan started on a positive, Feb saw a sharp decline and then we have seen March prices trying to consolidate. The metal beaming in news this week clearly has been gold. We've seen all-time highs in India so far in this year itself and an anticipated 25 basis point of a repo rate hike by the Monetary Policy Committee and a decline in the US dollar index have clearly been supporting the yellow metal. This week, it particularly is crucial for gold as the RBI has launched the last tranche of sovereign gold bond scheme for FY23. The series is open from subscription from 6th to 10th of March. The issue price fixed at 56111 rupees per gram of gold. And on the global front as well, the demand for gold has grown by 18% in the previous year by at around 4,742 tons, which has been the highest since 2011. And this is as per World Gold Council. So there clearly is so much happening in case of gold, whether it's about buying or the HUID. To talk all of that discussion forward, joining me now on the show is Chirag Mehta. He's Senior Fund Manager at Quantum AMC. Peter McQuire is CEO, Exim Australia, and PR Som Sundaram is Regional CEO, India at World Gold Council. Gentlemen, hi, thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Let's talk about the fundamentals itself, and we have started 2023 on a stronger note. And as I said, since those kind of levels, we've seen a huge amount of profit taking as well. Coming to you, first of all, Peter, what's your sense on the factors, fundamentals that you will watch from here on for gold? Well, Manisha, I think a couple of things I've got to keep a steady eye on. Certainly, US dollar index, we're conscious as far as Jay Powell's rhetoric and where we move this week. The inflation story hasn't seemed to, well, I don't think that's been put to bed at all. And how much further do central banks raise rates over the next quarter? And I feel as though that there's going to be a, a, a lot of volatility come across FX space. And I think that that's going to create uh, sizable moves across commodities and certainly the precious metals. All right. Well, yes, it's going to be about the U.S. Fed meeting, a meeting uh, in month of March as well, where 25 basis points is what the street really seems to be working with right now. But this one is to you, So, How are you looking at the markets? And uh, while, of course, uh, one thing that we keep talking about is uh, portfolio making, the other is the central bank buying, which quarter on quarter clearly seems to be supporting. Yeah, um, Manisha, as you know, last year, central banks bought nearly 1,100 tons, highest ever. Uh, even in the gold standard, they hadn't bought so much gold. So uh, clearly, there is a, a relook at gold when it comes to portfolio, even at the central banking level. When it comes to the retail demand, last year was slightly lower than the previous year because previous year was aided by the lockdowns and people came out and bought lots in the fast, uh, fourth quarter that uh, last year did not have that benefit, but it was still 3% below when it comes to India. But globally, it was an 18% jump. Again, as I said, largely driven by Barson coins demand and uh, the uh, central bank demand. This year, I expect India to continue to buy gold, 800 to 850 tons, regardless of how the uh, prices move. And that is something which I think we should get used to. This year is going to be driven more by growth, the domestic growth, because we have seen growth aids demand in India. Prices do tend to affect immediate uh, buying decisions, but overall you will see 800 to 850 tons demand this year. All right, so 800 to 850 tons of demand this year as well as something that the Indian markets could be looking at. Chirag, this one is to you. So when uh, Som talks about the retail buying, which we didn't see much of in the previous year, at least in the global numbers, how have the Indian markets been really when you look at FY23 as an overall? And uh, uh, what is your sense going forward? Because the gold prices are at a lucrative level. There is that conversation yet again about buying into gold because most markets believe that by this year end, you could be looking at gold prices at a hefty level. Sure. Uh, looking at from a portfolio perspective, Anisha, uh, gold had some headwinds in the equity markets globally were, uh, at least the Indian markets were doing really well. And therefore, uh, uh, there was some demand pull from the equity markets from investments like gold. But I think invest, Indian investors are learning it the hard way and looking at gold as a must allocation. So we have seen increasing appetite from gold from that perspective. Uh, overall, it was a mixed uh, bag when it came to even investment flows. Uh, it was a bit tepid year last year. It was really, really mixed uh, because there was heightened volatility at some point in time last year, which led to higher demand. And then as equity markets started recovering, 
uh, we saw some flows move back out of gold into equity markets. So overall, uh, fundamentally, we think that, you know, as prices are stabilizing at these kind of levels and the outlook looking a bit positive, given that, you know, much of the rate hikes are behind us, there could be some one or two more rate hikes from the U.S., and it could compel RBI to increase one more rate hike. But barring that, we have seen much of the pressure that uh, was building into gold and uh, through the higher dollar index was uh, much of it is behind us. So overall, we think that uh, as people become more constructive on the views, uh, we will see more uh, uh, increase in gold prices as well and more in demand per se. Uh, also to the fact that uh, Overall, gold demand will also increase because uh, there will be volatility in risk assets because if you see, look at the interest rates across the globe are at much higher levels than what we saw in the last two, three years, which leads to that impact on risk assets per se in a major way. And that volatility would also bring gold buyers into gold. So uh, overall, we're seeing a good positive year from a demand perspective. Also, remember that uh, this is a pre-election year. And given that rural economy is not being doing well, if we have a good harvest and some support from the government, there could be increased demand from rural India as well. So overall, from a buying perspective, we are seeing more constructive outlook, given that uh, it could be all cylinders firing on, uh, be it from an investment perspective or from an end consumer, given rural India consumes a lot of gold, we should see that demand come back in a major way. And what Som says as a number, could be easily achievable uh, from, from that perspective. So overall, a very good constructive uh, demand outlook. And from uh, if prices are supportive, if prices remain steady and then increase over a point of time, hmm. I think we will see that buying come in in a major way. All right. Chirag, since you also look at ETFs, what has been the kind of buying within India? Uh, because we do understand December and Jan again were months of redemption. How has Feb been and what do you see as a pattern now? Yes, yeah, so last three months we had small outflows that into from gold ETFs in India. But uh, one uh, heartening fact is that you know overall, if you look at the number of investors in in gold ETFs, they haven't declined or budged much. Okay. Uh, it is very very constant. That tells you that maybe some few high ticket investors may have moved or shifted from gold to equities. The large portion of the gold investors who have come in last few years ours remain put when it comes to their gold investments. Mm. So overall, uh, we think that this is only increase as volatility in gold subsides and prices become constant or steady. Uh, we will see that uh, uh, the investors come in a big way. Also, when the uh, demand outlook becomes constructive or the price outlook becomes more constructive, that is when we will see more investors coming in. So at times of heightened volatility in equity markets, we have seen good buying in gold ETFs. And we think that even this year, it's going to be the same as we see the impact of rate hikes on risk assets is where we see volatility and therefore uh, buying into gold ETFs will begin. Mm. Peter, what is your sense? I mean, as uh, Chirag mentioned out that uh, we, you know, constantly see the money moving within asset classes, a lot from equities. And then we saw gold making all time highs in the Indian markets. And then there has been some redemption with money moving yet again in case of equities. I mean, you look at equities and currencies and commodities as well. Globally, how do, have you seen the money move around? Well, I think Manisha, it's been, if you're looking since, let's put our minds back to, say, October, mm. we've seen a dramatic fall as far as US dollar index, and you've seen equities have a nice bounce to the upside or continued movement in that Christmas period and then even into January. So February was um, a little bit sideways, but overall it was fairly positive. So it's been a really strong start of the year and also China re-engaged. So if, if you're looking at movement, I think fast money finds the best return at, the, at a specific time frame. And we've seen such dramatic moves from currency trading perspectives where you've seen yen move from 150 to 128 back to 135. There's just one example. This is euro, pound, Aussie. Have a look at what's happened as far as energy prices. So all of those involved markets or, or, the, or the way that they move, everyone's got involved in fast moving markets and i think that's where the retail land has really found uh significant profits really since october november mm, well absolutely 
Fast money moves where you see profits and clearly gold has been quite volatile and we've seen fast moving money moving quite fast as well. But Som, this one is to you and there's just so much happening in the Indian markets as well. We have the sovereign gold bond uh, uh, being launched, another tranche yet again for this week where you also are looking at the festival week. And yes, people do go out and buy gifts and gold perhaps could be one of the reasons there. The other thing about is the HUID where a six digit number is now compulsory, mandatory rather from 1st of April. How do you look at both of these uh, coming in in the month of March and April? So th how do you see the market moving with both of these? Well, first of all, uh, sovereign gold bond, I think we have had some success from the government's point of view. Over 100 tons, uh, I don't have the exact figures, have been issued. So it is an extremely uh, interesting uh, security. It gives you interest on your investment and upside on gold. I don't think there is any such uh, security anywhere in the world that does that. So, but the question always remains, has it really stopped fiscal buying or is it, is it attracting new forms of investors? Now, that's for the economists to study, uh, but, but it, is, it is actually a very, very good uh, uh, security. And I'm sure it will be fully subscribed and there's no uh, issues at all about that. Hmm. Uh, coming back to HUID, I think HUID, as you know, Manisha, has been uh, there for the last uh, uh, two years, I think. It was just that it was not at the jeweler level. Jewelers were also allowed to sell old hallmarked jewelry, which did not have HUID. All that the change now has happened is that they can't sell the old inventories because two years time is uh, the government feels is sufficient to have sold your old stocks. So all that you will see from April 1st is that the existing HUID system applies to all of gold sold through the jewelry outlets. There is, no, there is going to be no parallel stream of saying I have old inventories which I have to sell mm -hmm. without HUID. This is going to be definitely a very interesting thing to see because sections of the trade were not very happy with HUID. Uh, so we have to see how this actually rolls out in, in reality. But from the consumer point of view, I would think this is an extremely positive step because now you have a six digit number. You can go into the uh, website and really check the entire history of that piece of jewelry. I think it's not there anywhere else in the world. This is, again, somewhere where India is leading with technology. And I think that trade should support it. It's not just for India. I think we should actually roll it out to other countries as well. Mm -hmm. This is one form of leadership in gold that India can show. Oh, well, absolutely. When it comes to transparency, credibility, ensuring that you're getting the same purity and weightage that you are paying for and a number, a unique code number on every piece of jewellery, it's something that we have seen India buy now get in through. And as said, from 1st of April, there would be only one uh, form of selling it. That would be the new HUID, which is a six-digit alphanumeric number, a unique code that would be put on each piece of jewellery there. So clearly, a lot of changes happening there in the market there. But with that, let's stop for a short break. When we talk back... We'll talk about uh, the weather concerns, also talk about China, economic data, dollar, on what really are the factors to watch out for as we move ahead into the year, especially in case of the US dollar and the gold there. The discussion continues when we return. Ready for a surprise? Vadinal Gourmet National Kesar Rasmalai Ice Cream. Itna creamy or rich ki naturally. Har dil bole, va Vadinal. Welcome back and we are in conversation with Chirak Mehta who is Senior Fund Manager at Quantum AMC. Peter McQuire is CEO, Exim Australia and PR Som Sundaram is Regional CEO, India at World Gold Council. And gentlemen, thank you so much for staying back. Uh, it has been a very volatile gold prices and so many changes, especially when we look at gold as a financial asset class there. We have seen a lot of changes being made into India. But moving forward, because it's a global commodity and there are just so many factors right now that various asset classes are watching out for. So this one is to you. So whether it's about the dollar index or China coming back, China being the major buyer of gold as well. And then the market's also looking at uh, weather concerns because a lot of rural India tends to buy gold too. Which one, which factor would you think will impact gold the most in terms of prices and demand as well? 
uh, prices, as you know, Manisha, is, is entirely driven by the U.S. interest rates currently. Um, and uh, uh, if a big thing like the uncertainty over the war just disappears, then you may see some reaction, but it's very difficult to predict what that would be. But largely, it's going to be interest rates which is going to drive it. And as Chirag rightly said, there's only so much headroom for the growth. So I think with the next increase or whatever, you will see that gold price uh, reacts positively. Now, coming back to uh, India, what would be the biggest factor? Clearly, monsoons always hold a, a great uh, significance for gold demand. But this year, as I mentioned, it is going to be more about uh, the growth. As we see more growth, people are going to buy more uh, gold. We have seen that not just from gold. You see the impact uh, or the demand of all the luxury goods in India today. They are all growing at, at uh, really crazy rates. So you will see uh, whatever happens to the prices. Because of growth, you are going to see a very, very strong coal demand this year. And Chirag also made a good point about this is also a pre-election year. So people, uh, I mean, you'll, you'll generally see that there will be a lot more interest in gold. Mm. So I would leave it at that saying that this is going to be a very, very uh, big year for gold demand. Again, 800 to 850 is what we expect because whatever happens in India, we just continue to keep buying that much gold. Oh, well, yes, that point is well taken. So also, when you know you do a lot of data analysis, so when we look at the buying that we see in India with the consumption, that is investment vis-a-vis -vis jewelry. I mean, we do understand that when it comes to India, the jewelry consumption is way higher than investment, and we are far away from getting those numbers within our portfolios here. But is there any trend change at all? Because there are now uh, millennials, and we see the younger crowd as well talking about gold in their uh, in the process of their portfolios. Uh, Manisha, it's a good point. We see, in terms of trends, we see people moving to digital forms of gold, uh, online buying of even gold jewelry. These are very strong trends. But if you look at the totality in absolute terms, they are still a very small fraction of it. Mm. And when it comes to bars and coins, India buys about 160 to 200 tons. You know, it varies, but this is the range that which we, we have been buying. About 25 to 30 percent of our demand comes maximum from bars and coins. Otherwise, it is largely given by jewelry. We haven't done any uh, research to see what part of this jewelry is very plain jewelry, you know, in that sense, uh, which is purely, you know, instead of having a coin, I will have a very small, simple chain. Mm. That I suspect is very, very large. Mm. So they are, have, they are invested with the investment motive, not so much with a motive to wear. So that is also a very significant portion. So if you take that as part of investment, you'll see about 50% to 60% of Indian demand probably will be investment driven. All right. So that, that's a number that we are looking at increase in as well. Uh, oh, Chirag, how do you look at these numbers also? And as said that it is going to be the U.S. Fed meeting. Markets have tried to factor in as much as they could. Is the reason we've seen this huge range of 1810 to 1970 on the higher side in the first two months of this year already? What is it uh, that, the, that, you know, ca can be an uncertainty, something that we haven't accounted for till now? So I think I'll clearly agree with Som when he said that uh, interest rates are the clear driver for gold prices currently, and it will remain so for next uh, uh, three to six months uh, once we have a handle, because markets were anticipating earlier that there will be a, a peak rate. And post that, given the uh, uh, issues surrounding economic growth that may surface, hmm. it will compel the Fed to pivot. Uh, so I think our sense still remains the same because we have seen a large increase in interest rates, about 450 basis points in U.S. already. That will have its impact on uh, the economy, on asset markets. And we've seen that, uh, you know, it kind of compels whenever it, uh, uh, the push comes, uh, it compels the Fed to pivot and, you know, uh, support growth at all costs. So I think we will be uh, witnessing the same repeat of that cycle going forward uh, whenever there is a impact on the economy uh i think the fed will pivot and we shouldn't be very far from that scenario as well so somewhere somewhere in the second half of the year we will see that happening uh, uh overall that fed pivots i think markets are uh, kind of giving discount to growth right now saying that uh, you know growth is still very very buoyant but uh, we will see a lag defect of the impact of interest rates. For example, the housing market is clearly showing uh, signs of de-stress. 
uh, currently. Uh, so overall, uh, there will be an impact from the housing market. And time and again, we have seen that with a lagged impact, the collapse in housing market does lead to an impact on the growth of the, of the overall economy. Plus signs of inverted yield curve, et cetera, are already showcasing that, you know, we may be staring at a recession. Mm -hmm. how, how deep that is, it's, it's a matter of debate, but we will be seeing at a slowdown. And when there is a meaningful slowdown and when everyone starts anticipating that, we will see an impact which is cascading in nature and therefore uh, compel the Fed to pivot. Uh, so that remains our base case, and we think that uh, we will, should be staring at that scenario. And when that comes into focus of markets, you will see pressure on risk markets, and gold should be doing well. Oh, well. Uh, that's the my set we are working with. Oh, yes. Most of the global banks and brokerages still believe that we could be making all-time highs in the dollar terms as well in this year. That could be in the second half of this year. That is when the U.S. Fed interest rates will peak out and the concerns that Chirag just spoke about, whether it's about from equities or real estate or the recession concerns, all of that could be supporting gold. So, Peter, this one is to you. Where do you see gold as a best-case scenario? What is the range that you're working with for the rest of this year now? And do you also are you also in a camp that believes that we could be inching towards all-time highs? Well, Manisha, I mean, we've got 10 months to go, and this is a very unusual year. First off, the the dollar, when we hear news as far as good news, the dollar does, doesn't seem to move. When you hear bad news, the dollar absolutely crumbles, and that's been very evident over the last matter of months. So right. build that into your case or, or your, 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 your best case. I really think that probably in the long term, Maybe sometime my third quarter, moving into fourth quarter, I won't be surprised to see gold 1950, 2000. And yes, I won't be surprised at all with the inflation story and trying to manage that with higher energy prices, that gold probably will take out an all time high this year. It's going to be wild, it's going to be exciting, and that's what traders want. They want movement. And 2% last week, Manisha builds on that. All right. So the demand is going to be on the stronger side. People are buying gold. And with the kind of narrative that we are getting into in this year, the rest of the year as well, does not loud, like, I mean, sound so great. So gold in your portfolio perhaps could give you that edge that we keep talking about at all times. Thank you, gentlemen, so much for joining us today and talking about all things gold. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Commodity Champions. Thank you for watching.